Well, as a matter of fact, they didn't start talking about this until they were driven into a corner. That's true. Indeed, we spent so much effort and time. On creating those precedents, we pushed it so hard to stir people up. Everyone is silent until they get hit. Well, it's not a hit yet. So far, they only incurred their first financial losses, but they've started singing like a bird. By the way, and the losses are already sizable. There's also such a wording from the news that at this conference in Davos, they speak for a united and sustainable world. But how can we do that if the gap between the poor and the rich is only growing? What do the poor and the rich have to do yes, with it? They cling to so that. So they're simply already. Do you know what the point is? Again, they cling. The gap between the poor and the rich is growing. And the rich are to blame for not sharing with the poor. Pardon me, what does this have to do with consolidation of the whole world? Of the entire humanity, in terms of assessing financial well-being? I don't understand that. Is that a slip of a tongue? I don't want to go to the dance, because I have, excuse me, wrong shoes, right? Or because I'm shy, or because I cannot dance. Just tell the truth. We don't want to unite because we don't want to, because later on we will have… To share. Not to share, it's not an issue of sharing. Does sharing stop anyone? Well, yes. It's all nonsense, it's a myth. People grow rich to infinity, not because they are so greedy, but merely because a competitive process is going on among them. Yes, consciousness. And they see no point in stopping. If they stop, they know they will be eaten. At a certain stage, this already becomes their security. They cannot afford to become poorer, otherwise they will be torn, eaten and trampled. Isn't that true? It is. It is. All this is already completely different. Do they grudge or what? What do they grudge? Any of them understands perfectly well that they won't eat more than the amount they eat during the day. Of course. It's all nonsense. It's just that they lull vigilance in people, saying that the events in 2018 right. and 2019 allegedly… That's actually paradoxical, because all scientists say that everything is aggravating. However, some forecasters who make predictions for the year 2020 say that the worst hurricanes have passed and they expect a recovery in the worldwide growth of the economy. So, should we show them what hurricanes may be like in 2020? I mean, they are sure that… It's good that… How are they sure? It's just that such information is spread for… For fools, right? Yes, for Many fools. Many people think, right now, yes, it's getting warmer and warmer, but next year it will be colder. It will be colder. Yes, it, it will cannot get, get warmer all the time. But everything will return to normal. Yes, get warmer. Everyone expects it. Yes, though. of course. The question is not about warming. No matter how warm or cold it gets, this is collapsing. The process of destruction has begun. The question is not about what temperature we have outside today. Right. The question is about the globality of changes. And this, pardon me, cannot be measured by the average temperature outside the window. Those are different processes, and everyone understands that. And it is visible and clear why this is happening. Why are there fires along fault zones? Yes, yes A exactly. simple question. Not a climate. Has anyone thought about that? Is it actually a climate problem? No, those are different processes. Much more serious ones. Of right. course, and everything is much more serious. Whereas climate change is actually the visible and observable consequences of processes which we don't see. Meanwhile, we are talking about the processes that are invisible to the naked eye, which result in, let's say, changes in the temperature outside the window, a lack of snow, or on the contrary, too much snow. The fact that there are fires along fault lines and that people cannot put them out. They do not succeed in that. Right. And many other there things. There are no technical capabilities. Of course. What capabilities does humanity have to confront, excuse me, nature? We can make a mess. But as for confronting, well, how? Consciousness forbids people to be friends with each other. People build walls against each other. And that too. Yes, although you never know how the situation will unfold. Perhaps what you have built against your friend will play… Yes, precisely. Will afterwards hamper you in running. Yes, it will become a wall of death It will you. hamper you in running. To your friend when you get in a pressing situation. That's also a serious question. And building walls to ensure that people don't come to you may just as well become an obstacle in your way when you run there. People don't really think about that. Consciousness always tells them, we are fine, it's somebody else who's in a bad situation. Meanwhile, the events are already quite unpredictable. Yes, unfortunately. Definitely. Igor Mikhailovich, today you've said that a lot depends on people and that it is still possible to preserve humanity. What can each person simply do right now? 
people who turn on this video for the first time and who are listening to us may have a question. But what can I do at my place? It is clear that nothing depends on politicians, on the leaders. But what can I do? You can do a lot. If you have understood this, you can explain what you've understood to your friend. And already, not just one, but two of such people will join the society which understands, and the two of you can explain it to a third person. And there are already three of you, right? That's how society comes together. We don't have to wait until they put us, excuse me, over the precipice. And that's when we will already be forced to join hands. It's just that it will already be pointless then and won't solve anything. Meanwhile, we will join hands much earlier and do everything we can to avoid, pardon me, being pushed to that edge, isn't that so? A lot depends on everyone. And it's true. Don't even let a thought into your head that humanity is doomed. Even change the program to an idea that everything is in our hands, and we can at least make society happy. After all, this is also… You should start from the elementary thing, to put things in order in your head. This will already weaken the system. Of course. And this will already change the program as a whole, even if it's just for a little bit. You know, it's like a TV set. There is a huge TV set. If one pixel is broken, we won't notice it. But what if two, three or five are broken? Of course. And if most of them are broken, the image is already distorted, right? Certainly. When you put things in order in your head, you restore a pixel and the image gets better. A simple example. It's like physics, isn't it? Of course. If many people think positively, the same positive thoughts will come to other people in other parts of the world as well. Sure. And this will intensify everything. It will start intensifying everything. And an opportunity. And it will give an opportunity, yes. it will give strength for people to actually implement what is good and positive. Thus, it will give humanity a chance to step on another stage in its evolutionary development. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful. It seems to me it's great and interesting. It is new, and it is interesting. Again, the subject of attention, to invest attention Yet everything depends. in what you want. Sure, of course. Attention is power. Where we allocate it, that's what we get. Everything is simple. May I ask another question? It is just that there are also eyewitnesses whom participants of the Alatra movement come into contact with. Now, a lot of people say that the only thing which can save us from cataclysms is a humane society. It turns out that it is so important nowadays for people, for every person, to share how important it is to build the creative society. Even I believe that it is possible when you at least share that it is realistic or you at least allow yourself I don't know, mm, to dream that this society is possible, that's already better. It's even better not just to dream, but to act, to create this of society. Of course, everything is in our hands after yes. all. Yes, in fact, consent is not just a matter of saying, yes, I agree, but it's a matter of taking coordinated actions together. This is Absolutely certainly... right. First of all, these are actions yes. aimed at creation and not at destruction. We shouldn't break everything old, not at all. We should first build something new before refusing the old, right? Right.